Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is Jacqueline. Well, this is part 5 of this series, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you all the final reveal of how my Moroccan garden tea party turned out. I will include all the decor, the DIY projects, and all the unique party activities I did to help transport my guests to beautiful and exotic Morocco for a fun tea party they will never forget. Intrigued? Well, keep on watching. Let's start with the menu. As you can see, my menu mostly consisted of appetizers, both savory and sweet, which could mostly be eaten in true Moroccan fashion with your fingers. It included chicken and shrimp skewers, and of course, my favorite Moroccan dish, chicken bastilla, which was the favorite among my guests. I served most of my food in the small kitchen table, which I decorated with the tile tray that I DIY'd and some adorable camels I've had for a long time. I used one of my thrifted saris as a tablecloth, several gold platters, and my DIY three-tier tray, which I painted gold this time to go with my new color scheme. Very welcoming and beautiful Moroccan tradition I wanted to include was that of the hose washing the hands of her guests in rose or orange blossom water right before the meal. So I created this hand washing station by the pool and my guests lined up one by one so I could wash their hands. I didn't have one single area where all the guests could sit, so I created two areas. One under the pergola, for those who prefer to sit in a normal chair, and another one under my Moroccan tent canopy, for those daring enough to sit on the floor. For those of you who have seen any of my previous party videos, you know that I cannot seem to throw a party without including a shower curtain somewhere, either as a backdrop or as a tablecloth, you name it. Well, this time I figure I would include one as a shower curtain. What a concept! After my guests enjoyed the appetizers, it was time for the traditional Moroccan mean tea. I tried to prepare as traditionally as possible with Chinese gum powder tea, but I sweetened mine with a lot of honey instead of sugar. I had to do multiple taste tests to get it just where I wanted it to be. The final test was the serving of the tea, which I tried to do traditionally, as it is often done from high above to help aerate the tea and improve its flavor further. Finally, it was time to take some fun photos at the Moroccan arch and flying carpet I created. I initially was going to set up a selfie station, but I opted to take all the pictures myself to make sure everyone was getting in on the fun. I also had a couple of trunks full of costume and accessory pieces from my days when I used to take delegancy. So I had a lot of fun dressing everyone up to fit the mood and the vibe. For my final activity, I taught those who were willing and able some belly dance moves I still remember. I showed them some of my favorite veil moves as well as some fun hip moves and shimmies. Since my party was in the afternoon, most of my guests had left by the time the sun set, so they didn't get to appreciate my setup all lit up with lights and candles. So just for fun, I went ahead and reset some of the tables so I could take some nice nighttime shots in the beautiful glow of my lights and candles.
So there you go. I hope you enjoyed my Moroccan Garden Tea Party series. And I hope it inspired you to go ahead and also dare to try something new. Until the next time.